Our Cardinals are Super Bowl champions. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cardinal Rebuild franchise. We've already achieved the top goal in this series of winning the Super Bowl. Now our journey continues as we try to keep the Cardinals atop the NFL and to build a tradition of winning. Welcome back to the series, everybody. I can't believe we won the Super Bowl the way we did and in this season. One more run here through our playoff schedule before we get into the offseason. This was unlike anything I could have ever expected from our team. We go 9-6-1 to get a first round bye and then beat the Chicago Bears and then defeat Philadelphia and beat Miami in the Super Bowl. Our defense was so good in the postseason. Our three opponents scored 21 points, 17, and 17. I think that we're seeing the defense become kind of the backbone of this team. And a lot of that has to do with the secondary changes I've made, getting Aaron Howell and Denard Huval. Also being able to upgrade Buda Baker like I have. And then also consider what Jalen Smith has meant to this defense and how good he is in pass defense. I still think that this was one of the best decisions I made in this series. And without Jalen Smith, I'm not sure where this team is. But that's the fun of doing a series like this. Sometimes you make moves that you're like, yeah, this might work out. And it turns out it helps you win a Super Bowl. So now, off-season time is today after Super Bowl 56. What's on the agenda first? Well, we got to keep our head coach, Steve Wilkes. He's helped us win a Super Bowl. He has a lot of different XP goals unlocked and probably can get a whole lot more. So hopefully he stays here in Arizona. I think everybody else is already signed. I'm not sure. If not, I'll just make offers here and we'll start off the offseason with that. Oh, more weekly awards. What do we have here? We have Isaac White and Buda Baker, the players of the week here in the Super Bowl. In the AFC, it was Mike Kosicki and Shaq Thompson. And it's upgrade time for the offensive line. Isaiah Wynn. Very, very big day against Khalil Mack, helping protect us. And he's uh, another big signing that was made. The number two right tackle now in the NFL. We go pass protector. Wynn goes up with two finesse. Strojny could use a boost in the finesse department as well. So we upgrade him to an 80 and get that pass block finesse up. Hey, we got our trainer and our scout back. What about Coach Wilkes? Do we not get him? Coach Goal's not available. I'm not sure if we have a coach, but I know we have a really nice shiny trophy now in his office. He's here in the background. Like, if he wasn't the coach anymore, wouldn't he be off the screen? I don't know. But it's time to re-sign. Some big decisions to make today, too. We have some key free agents like Trey Boston, Will Wade, Ricardo Collins, Curtis Samuel. I already uh, took care of some of the tough stuff, it looks like. So... We'll start with Trey, and as much as I like Trey Boston and how helpful he was to this team, I think he's one of the players we're going to let go. With Patrick Peterson getting older, I'd like to lengthen his career by moving him to free safety, and that would obviously take Boston's place, and then that allows Aaron Howell and Jackie McAllister and Denard Huval to all play together. DJ Humphreys is a pretty good tackle slash guard, better run blocker than pass, but he's one of those players I don't think is right for us to re-sign. We'll look for a replacement in the draft or internally. Will Wade is really a tough one for me because we have a lot of receivers on this team who could be great given the opportunity to keep playing and to progress in their careers. And Wade so far in his career has been pretty productive this was his best year, and he seems to have gotten better every year in the league. 817 or 819 yards, five touchdowns. He does a lot of the dirty work underneath. Isaac White isn't going anywhere, but the player that makes me think more about keeping Will Wade is actually Parker Tate, a player who didn't play a ton this year. Here are the numbers, though. 214 yards. Parker Tate is more dynamic of an athlete than Will Wade. And Tate also has a lot of the same strengths with the better short and medium route running. So, with that speed, I think his ceiling is higher than Wade's. But would it be worth it to let Wade go to let Parker Tate hopefully 
become what Wade is already, and then hopefully take it a step further. There is some risk there. To compare these two directly, Wade has six lower speed. He does have better acceleration. They do have the same catching. Wade better with catching traffic by four, seven better short route running, two better medium, and seven better deep. So with Wade, he is more polished as a receiver. I still like the ceiling of Parker Tate. But if we can fit Wade's salary in, I would like to keep him. From a cap standpoint, we're by no means in any kind of trouble. Here are the largest contracts on the team. Isaiah Wynn, Joey Bosa, Deshante Nolan. A lot of these players are still in their 20s and they're well worth the money. Boston's obviously not going to be here next season. So I'm glad we've given a lot of money to players who still can progress in their careers and very few are on the downswing like Patrick Peterson. Still, I would be comfortable negotiating with Will Wade outside of this because I don't think going up to $7 million a year is a great value for us, even though we could afford it. I just think that we can get him cheaper when, we, when it comes to the uh, next period of free agency. So I will make a small offer here. I think closer to 5 is what I'm interested in. And obviously, he's rejecting this deal, and we'll try to get him back next. Here's Ricardo Collins, and we've had a lot of young edge rushers on this team. Jalen Graham is the one who's taken off the most. Collins had a really good second season, but he's lost some playing time in the last couple of years, so he's not progressing as much. He's now 26 years old. What do you do with a player like Collins, who's very fast and has good finesse? Graham's obviously going to keep starting, and I'm not sure if he always had this, but he has star development. Let's see if he just earned that sometime recently. There it is, the wild card week plus star development trait. Not sure exactly what triggered that, but I'd say that he's definitely developed pretty well in this series. And here are the career numbers. He has eight and a half sacks in his first year, then three, then nine and a half. So pretty solid there in terms of sacks. The tackle numbers are pretty high. I like all the tackles for loss as well. So Graham and Bosa are the core edge rushers. I think that if we're going to have anybody else behind them, they should be younger and not a 26-year-old at this point who is probably going to be a backup still for a while. So I'll look to draft somebody to fill that role. Plus, we also have Joey Gilmore, who is another finesse rusher. Maybe it would be a good idea now to start thinking about what's after Bosa and get someone with a bit more power. Bosa has both, but he is... Oh, I guess he's a higher speed rusher. 99 finesse. All right, he's just good at everything. But nonetheless, I think getting a power rusher on this team is a good idea. Collins is one of those players, though I would try to offer maybe in the next round if we can get him for a couple of years on a smaller deal. He would be a great backup for sure. Obi Melifonwu, 29 years old. We're going to pass on this opportunity and try to get younger there at safety. We need to be at ready for after Patrick Peterson, of course. Curtis Samuel, 27 years old. He has been pretty key for us, but I'd like to bring him back on a smaller deal. A lot of these offers are just way more than I want to offer at this point. Griffin Elliott, probably going to let him go. We'll let Azeem Victor go as well. AJ Flacho, still a backup tackle two-year deal. This to me is very fair, and he's about to upgrade again. So we do keep a backup tackle in here. Deshaun Mays, 27, 75 years old, or 75 overall. I had some higher hopes for Mays, but we haven't seen that potential realized quite yet. Not big sack production. Actually, he didn't get a ton of playing time this year. I know we had Jonathan Allen involved now and Robert Kimdichie. So again, it's another situation where I don't think that keeping the 27-year-old backup is the best idea. Let's try to go younger again. Yeah, let's try keeping Sean Nicholas here, but I want to do a two-year deal if we can. He's close to a 69 overall, and we'll keep him involved. Daniel Meacham, definitely want to keep him as a backup tackle or guard option. And I think we can go a little bit cheaper here as well. And Meacham is sticking around as well. I think that's everybody then. Franchise tag would be way too much for any of these players, so we're done here with our free agents. Hey, the Lombardi Trophy's there in the background. Did that just show up after we won the Super Bowl? That's pretty cool. Okay, so 
So Steve Wilkes is hanging on to the Lombardi for us, keeping it safe. It's getting some sun right now. And now let's see who's available in free agency. We do have the money to make a move if there's the opportunity. And here we go. Grady Jarrett, 30 years old, is the top option. Then Eric Berry, Casey Hayward. A lot of older players have hit the market, and I'm not particularly interested. Will Wade is the number three receiver, so that does make me a little nervous that there will be some interest and a tougher time getting him back here. But I'm still going to make an offer here in round one that I hope he'll ultimately accept. Again, my target was closer to $5 million a year. I'll try the 11.6 offer here. This would take it more than five, but I'm not sure if he'd take this in round one. Curtis Samuel has been so big for us as a role player. I know that the ratings might not jump off the screen or anything, but I know what he's done for us, and I would like to keep him around here on a cheaper deal than he was wanting, but I think it would be fair. Let's put in the offer for Collins now. $6 million over two years. Okay, Carroll Stewart, somewhat interesting. He has good hit power, power move, and block shed. Might be a decent backup for what I'm looking for. You know what? I want to get Shaquem Griffin on the team as well, perhaps, as a backup edge rusher. 91 speed, 82 finesse move. You can find a spot to use athletes on the field, and he might not be great in coverage, so he's probably best moving toward the quarterback rather than away, but we can definitely make something work with these skills. Safety is a pretty thin position for us, so I wouldn't mind getting a more established backup at least. Let's take a look here at Jalen Brady, a hybrid safety who's 26 years old. He has 80 zone, 83 speed, 76 tackle. This isn't bad. Do worry about that speed. Keegan Massey's already a scheme fit. He has zone chemistry, 82 speed. I think I prefer going with Jalen Bailey over him. I don't normally make all these small offers like this. I don't think so anyway. But we offered it Jalen Bailey, keeping everything here basically in the yellow for the quality of the offers. But these high profile names, many of them have regressed pretty heavily. So there's not a ton that I want to do here. I like the team that we have. I'm just trying to fill a few gaps and prepare for the draft. And I think that uh, we're about ready to move on. Any new players? Yes, Jalen Bailey. Ricardo Collins, those two accept. It doesn't appear that anybody declined, so there are definitely some battles perhaps heating up now in the free agent offers. Let's take a look at league signings. Grady Jarrett going to the Browns. Nice deal for him. Eric Berry out to Philly. Casey Hayward to Cincinnati. Trey Boston found a new home in Seattle. And I think that's a bargain for a player of his caliber. So we get Collins back, a new safety as well. Will Wade, wow. Miami is always the team that goes way over everybody else. Why is that? Miami's about to give him like 10 mil a year, it looks like. Can I somehow see? Like their offer is double ours. I don't think Wade's coming back. Okay, Titans, you can have Carol Stewart then if you want him that bad. I can find a new player in the draft. We're leading for Griffin. We are leading for Curtis Samuel, but Will Wade, like, let's see what it would take then to get up to what Miami is offering, because I think it's way more than is reasonable. Well, that's 113. This one is 27 and a half over three. That would not do it. So it turns out Wade might end up getting like $4 million more per year than he was expecting. This would not give us the lead. And that's a 10 mil a year deal for Will Wade. Honestly, as much as I've liked having Wade on this team, and I think he's a great fit for what we do, there's a reason that Parker Tate's on the roster, and it was because I wasn't sure about Wade taking that next step. And I wasn't sure if he'd ever become a true, like, high-end number one or number two receiver. I think Parker Tate has a chance to do it. He's 23 years old. He does a lot of the same things that Wade does well, but he does it with more speed. Now that could maybe not be a big deal because his deep route running is horrible and he's still got to get better in some other areas. Man, this is tough. There's also the draft we have to take a look at and perhaps there are some receivers out there that are intriguing and it's not a very deep receiver class at the top. 
Joseph Fisher, really interesting here with uh, good route running. Very similar to Will Wade in the uh, route running department and probably in athleticism. Unfortunately, this wasn't a very good combine. Harmon Conley has good short route running. He is a little faster at 4.53, so I'd expect mid to high 80s for his speed. Um, decent vertical and broad jump. He's a late second round talent. There's Kirkland Dickerson here, who has pretty good medium and deep route running. More speed to the table here with him. Really good release too, so I think that his upside as a deep threat is probably pretty good. Here's Walker Roll, a 7.3 combine grade from Liberty. 6'5", 233, with 449 speed. The best vert in the class. Now his three cone and 20 yard shuttle aren't great, but he is 6'5", 233. Has good short route running. He'd be a project, but probably one worth getting on this team. It's really strange this year at the wide receivers. There are less good athletes and more good route runners than in the past. So it's really hard to find that perfect receiver that's pretty much good at everything this year. We could try to find a safety to get early in the draft to be the replacement maybe in a year for Patrick Peterson. Montre Tam. Decent speed here. Good zone coverage. C-minus tackling isn't as bad as you think because secondary players do tend to have lower tackle ratings. This isn't bad at all, and he's a scheme fit. Oh, wow. Ivory Walton, the strong safety out of Clemson, is only 21. Better in man coverage than zone, and he ran a 4-3-9 with a 25-rep bench. That's incredible, but I'm not sure they'll be there at 32. With letting DJ Humphreys go, we also need to figure out what are we doing at guard. Do we have internal options or do we need to draft somebody? Here's Antoine Crawford, a fourth rounder who has really high bench and that's going to lead to excellent strength. He doesn't have the most complete skill set, so he would be a project, but he would be a scheme fit and the perfect fit for us. We do have Jared Strojny on one side. His main backup is Daniel Meacham, who's only a 70 overall. Not ready to start. And then at right guard, there's Titus Green, who would not be the worst player to maybe give a shot this year. Green has 74 overall. He is quick dev. And it looks like his skills are decent across the board other than awareness. So Green wouldn't be the worst, but we should try to address the position if we can. Also, we could consider playing Turner Latsko there as well. I'm sure at guard, his overall is just fine. He's 6'7", 309, good strength. That could work as well. But I still think we should address the offensive line somewhere. And also, with Ryan Kelly's regression now, I wonder if it's time to just play Alexander Barton, maybe trade Ryan Kelly, and just get younger at this spot as well. Check out this combine for Hanson Davenport. That is really, really cool at center. He's 23 years old, decent pass protector. I don't know if he'll be a target of ours though. I'm going to put out an offer there though for Will Wade. This is going to be two years now, 16.6 million. I don't expect him to take it, but I'm not willing to go over Miami's offer. We could afford it, but I just don't think it's the right move for us. So let's go on to stage three. Stewart rejected our deal, Shaquem Griffin accepted, and Will Wade has declined. I know that's going to be one that many of you don't like because Wade was effective, he was good, and I kind of pushed him out the door here. We could afford him, we could afford what he wanted, we could have afforded the top Miami. I just didn't think it was the best deal considering we have Parker Tate on the roster. He does have a higher ceiling, I'd say, as a player. So he's going to Miami here on the $30.9 million deal over three years. $11 million of that is guaranteed with the bonus. Curtis Samuel is still holding out for more money, it seems. Now Curtis Samuel accepts the deal, and we have our final chance to scout players. All right, so I finished scouting now, unless I can find somewhere to spend my remaining eight points. But this is an interesting class here. There are a ton of first-round quarterbacks that we're obviously not interested in taking. There are also a bunch of first-round running backs that I'm sadly not interested in taking because we do have Johnson and Nick Chubb on the team. At wide receiver, 
it's actually a very thin class at the top. And then, considering offensive line is mostly good, not looking in this area, I do think that addressing defensive line can be something we do, and there could be some options here. We have some second round defensive tackles and some second round edge rushers. I think we have to look a lot at the second round players when it comes to the first round, unless there's somebody worth trading up for, which I'll probably check on after we get into the mid-teens. And then for linebackers, I do think we should address this just so we're better off for the future. At corner, I would like to get maybe one more player just to build behind our top three. And then I think safety is pretty important to be ready after Pat Pete, but nothing seems like a really steep need right now. The Chiefs could use a center, and they have a receiver here I might be very interested in as a replacement for Will Wade. Chris Godwin, very good speed. He's an outstanding receiver. 82 overall might not be the most impressive, but in this series, 82 is pretty good. If we could trade for Chris Godwin, I'd be really happy. I have to see that deal, though. He is 27. How many years left on that contract? Just one. I'll do it. So how much of a gap here do I need to make up? Oh, probably just like a mid-round selection or something. Okay, let's get a deal done. Let's address wide receiver with one of my favorite players to come out of the draft in recent years. I love watching Godwin at Penn State, and I think that he would complement Isaac White really well. They could both stretch the field, and I think Godwin's the more complete receiver. Let's see here. Do I want to go all the way up to 97 here at top 100 pick? What if I do a 4 and a 6 instead? That gets it done. We make the trade, Ryan Kelly in a couple picks for Chris Godwin. And that's how we replace Will Wade. We get younger at center, but not necessarily worse. Barton was the same overall and he's about to be upgraded as well. So we get a chance to develop a scheme fit center. And now the pair on the outside, Isaac White and Chris Godwin for at least one year. And one more time, here are the ratings. Godwin, very good down the field. Doesn't really have a weakness. He might not be elite in every area, but I don't see any weaknesses. And I can't wait to see the kind of tandem he can make with Isaac White. So yeah, that is bad news, obviously, for Parker Tate. It looked like it was his job to take, and now maybe not so much. But this was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Godwin's very talented. They really wanted Ryan Kelly, and it just cost me a couple late picks to get the deal done. So I'm really happy about that. So as we approach the NFL draft, I really don't think there's much to address offensively other than maybe some more offensive line help in the interior. I think this is going to be a more defensive heavy class as we try to prepare for what happens after Patrick Peterson is gone and this year he's going to play safety for us. I think we can also look at defensive line, any of those spots. Bosa, why is he listed here as a backup? Let's fix that. But obviously we could use another backup defensive tackle, another edge rusher, and that linebacker. I mean, if Jalen Smith goes down, we ought to be ready for that situation. We have gone aggressive, though, for linebackers recently, getting Marquise Pleasant. And also last season, our top selection was Deontay Graham. Graham, though, not going to make many plays in coverage, and neither is Pleasant. So I think getting another field general linebacker is a must. And here we go, the NFL Draft is underway, and the top pick is DJ Burns, left tackle out of pit, 81 overall. So we'll get out of the top 10 here and see how the board falls, if there's a player worth trading up for, even if it took us maybe our first, second, and third round selections. This is the kind of draft where if we come away with like two or three picks, we're probably fine. There goes Tam to the Rams, 76 overall. Eric Bowen off the board. A tight end to the Ravens. A corner to Minnesota, of course. Darion Ben, Barry Shepard. All right, let's take a look at the board now. This would be trading up halfway up the, the board if we did this. I have 58 players on the board. Let's go back to available, though, and see first round talents that I've actually scouted. There's Bennett Wilkins here, a power back. 
And these power backs all usually have pretty mediocre speed and athleticism overall, but they're very powerful and have good trucking. Not going to trade up for a tight end. Trey Tutton here, 5'10", 208, combine is decent, nothing really stands out, but I think he'll be really good. Rashawn Adams here, an elusive running back, pretty good, 3 cone, 20 yard shuttle, and bench, wow, 29 bench reps for a 195 pound back, that's impressive. Is TJ Olsen worth trading up for? He's a late first rounder. 4-6 speed, A-minus hit power. I think that he could be good, but we don't know about his cover skills. This was such a good running back class. Santiago Hemsley, 4-3-9 speed, great juke, carry, and spin. Running back is not a need with DJ, Chubb, and Kadron Sharp. This is a strange class, and maybe the chances to trade up are already gone, but I don't think you're getting up with a first, second, and third anyway. Super high in the draft. Continuing on, wide receiver going to Green Bay. TJ Olsen, the 182 overall. So Cincinnati is a team we need to check out after this. From those ratings, I didn't think it'd be worth a trade up. And now we're getting into some of the low to mid 70 overall players. Whoa, what a steep drop off all of a sudden. There's JC Tomlinson now with the green 76 overall. We're just going to get to our selection here at our spot at pick 32. Quarterbacks are still out there, and I'm guessing that a lot of the running backs are as well. Are you telling me I could take Trey Tutton or Bennett Wilkins or Jason Lemon or Rashawn Adams or Santiago Hemsley? What am I supposed to do in this spot? Is this my reward for winning the Super Bowl? I get to pick between all these first round running backs? Well, I better at least start ranking them to really decide what I'm going to do in this situation. Santiago Hemsley, let's start with him here. Hemsley, very high speed, 43940. His bench is average, he's 24 years old, so that does hurt development a little bit, getting only five years basically to do it, but great juke, carrying, and spin. Trey Tutton is 22, very good juke, break tackle, and vision. We all know vision in the type of games that we play here is very important. 4 4 9 40, 15 bench reps, he's more complete. Jason Lemon is the fastest of this group and he had 25 bench reps. The vision is super high, the carrying is high, the spin is high. What else could be B plus or even a B? We know vision is, carrying, he's 21. He might be the best of this group here. Sean Adams, 7.7 .7 combine grade. I love that power. I still would love to see his ratings. His vision is super high as well. Wow. These backs are really good. And then there's Carlos Ramzor in the second round. Not as impressive here, but another good prospect. There was Bennett Wilkins, but these power backs, I just don't like the athletic profile they have when they come in. And I like a bit more speed and athleticism here in Madden. Let's do it. He's going to have a very complete skill set, it appears. Great vision. 21 years old. After all this, we're going first round running back. Jason Lemon is the pick. And superstar development. You're kidding me. No way. No way. That did not just happen. Superstar. That is so rare this year. Jason Lemon, 12th in true talent. You're kidding me. Pat Pete already gave him his jersey and everything. 92 speed, 89 vision, 77 break tackle, 79 elusiveness, 91 agility. Wow. I'll have to check on traits. 70 catching. 70 catching, everybody. Unreal. A superstar running back after winning the Super Bowl. Is it my birthday? I can't believe it. I just took an 80 overall superstar development player. That's the first superstar dev player I've drafted this year. That's incredible. Superstar is very rare. And star is normally enough 
Like, you see what Star is doing for Aaron Howell, I hope. And now with Lemon, I think we have our answer for after David Johnson. And now we have to ask ourselves, when is the end of David Johnson in Arizona? That's going to be a tough situation to handle. But it's a good problem to have because we're very talented. I can't believe we had all of this come together the way it did. And if there was a player at a greater need that I thought stood out, I would have gone in that direction, but I just didn't see it. And you certainly haven't seen anybody come off the board recently, a non-running back with incredible ratings. This was a running back class. Plain and simple. So now, what else can we do with this draft? We got ourselves a pretty good start. Nice pick, Miami. I think here I'd like to build up some D-line depth. Let's go with Jamon Pryor out of Auburn, a power rusher. Very good power moves to start out. Perhaps I can do a much better job of developing him over to Sean Mays. Pryor's the pick with normal development. They do call it a reach. He was a late second round prospect, so it's not egregious, but he certainly needs a bit of work, but has a great starting foundation. On the clock again in round number three. Another top 100 pick to make. And then we pick in the first uh, the first pick of the fourth round. So we got back to back. I think with one of these picks, we're going to go with Julius Hollier and try to get ourselves another young edge rusher to develop. Good finesse moves here. 23 years old and has a little bench in his game as well. So the strength should hopefully make him a bit more complete, I'm thinking. And Hollier is a good pick here, 77 in true talent, normal development. Julius Hollier with 82 speed, 84 finesse. The power is 70, so that's not going to be what he leans on. But it looks like with block shedding being that high, that he'd actually have a chance, perhaps, of being a starting end. That strength, though, worries me. So we'll see if he can develop into a good edge rusher. We have some depth, though, at that spot, getting Ricardo Collins back and even Shaquem Griffin. So maybe it wasn't the most necessary pick, but I like getting a bunch of options there along the, the front seven, especially in the case of injuries. And now in round four. Things are looking pretty thin here when it comes to offensive linemen, so I only have a couple options left that I like. I'm likely to target Parker Taylor a little bit later with a really good impact block, so we're not going to address that as well as I had hoped. This one's been a little tougher. We have a couple corners here I liked. Wofford, though, is going to have really low speed. He would fit our scheme. I just really worry about having like 85 speed or something like that. Not sure if I should worry about it that much because it could go up. There is Spencer Barnes, though. I think his ratings might actually be a little bit better. Good zone here. Decent press. He's a little bit faster. Just be a little bit of a reach. But I think I'm... I'm okay with it. Spencer Barnes is the selection, and it's a good pick. 66 in true talent. He does fit the scheme on day one and has 88 speed and a really good foundation. Now we go all the way to late in the fifth round, so a lot of picks between these two. What's still out there? Not much, apparently. Okay, then. I missed out on the safety I wanted and everybody else I had interest in. The whole board is almost wiped out. Okay then, I wasn't expecting anything like that to occur. So I guess we continue on here trying to make the most of this. Yeah, I don't mind trading out of this one, especially not knowing anybody who's left. So I'll acquire at least one mid-round pick for next year. All right, we're not going to be making too many more selections apparently, but we are going to select Mr. Irrelevant. I just traded for three picks for next year. Just could not find anything that I thought was a good idea. So I, I could have done a lot of things in this draft better. I did not expect that everybody would go between those two selections of ours. So who do we make Mr. Irrelevant? Safety and linebacker were two areas I wanted to address, but obviously this was a strange class. I took a running back, I've taken a defensive tackle, and a linebacker, an edge rusher, really a defensive end and then a corner. So, who can be Mr. Irrelevant? I think that Ja'Cory Heward is a great fit. He's from Southern Miss, hybrid safety, good height and weight, 
22 years old. He's strong with a decent 40. Ja'Cory Heward, you are Mr. Irrelevant. I've never made the last pick before. It doesn't show you anything? I have to learn later? How good is Ja'Cory Heward? Well, he is... Come on. 67 overall. That's not bad for the last pick of the draft. Ja'Cory Heward. He's almost zone chemistry or zone archetype. 88 speed, 70 zone, 69 tackle. Definitely a project here. It might not work. But we made five selections this year. And of course, the greatest one is Jason Lemon. Superstar development running back who only requires 3,720 XP to upgrade to his next overall. We have a chance here to get ourselves a great running back for the future. This is definitely bad news for Nick Chubb especially, and maybe even David Johnson. I know that many of you are now going to say, okay, time to trade DJ. DJ, by the way, 31 years old, 87 overall right now, and he's been a big part of this series. Trading him would not be something that I would have like an easy time with here. Here's what he did last season, though. Four and a half a carry, 13 touchdowns. And receiving 507 yards and five touchdowns. Like I said before, this is a very good problem to have, but I don't know what we're going to do with it quite yet. Patrick Peterson, though, like I said before, we're moving him out to free safety this season to help extend his career and let our young corners get more playing time. So Peterson moves out, and Howell is in now as the number one corner. And we're going to need him, Huval, and McAllister to all keep developing to keep this secondary, the no-fly zone part two. I think we have ourselves a very good team, but we are thin in some certain areas. So if injuries are unlucky this season, that's not going to be a good time. But I think we have a good team here. It's not perfect. We could still use uh, a couple things filled here, and we certainly could have done a better job with the offensive line. Safety wasn't too much of a need because we do have Pat Pete this year. So if we draft somebody else next year, we did get Jalen Bailey though. So got some depth. What do you think of this off season though? How do you think I handled things this year with the players I let go, the trade for Chris Godwin and the draft picks I ultimately made? Let me know down below in the comment section. Oh, I didn't go through any other teams yet. I'm not done yet. One second, please. The Chargers had taken somebody I had interest in, Warren Hyde, 77 overall, outside backer, normal development, and he's a run stopper. I wasn't sure if he could play coverage, and it turns out he couldn't, so he wouldn't have been the right pick for us. They also got Bennett Wilkins, an 80 overall running back, who has actually pretty good speed and great tackle, and the elusiveness in those ratings aren't horrible, so I should have given Wilkins more credit but I am very happy ending up with Lemon. Atlanta ended up with Rashawn Adams, the elusive back, who also had quick development, 90 speed, very good vision, and even some strength and break tackle in there. The Titans went and got Trey Tutton, 78 overall, the year of the running back in the draft. Quick development, very good speed, and nice break tackle, but low strength and trucking, so how does that all play out? Not sure, but Trey's good. And what about Santiago Hemsley? I had a lot of interest in him. Quick Dev 80. I would have been excited to get that on the team. Any of these running backs would have been great, but I do think I got the best of the bunch. I got lucky with that one. It was a great running back class, and I think we made the most of it, but we did uh, not address a few other areas that were definitely important. So we'll see what it all means. Oh, we can actually go through here by the NFL. I didn't know you could do this. I wanted to go after the fourth round. We had all sorts of players leave the board. And I was really confused about how they all went off the board in like 50 selections. But after we selected Spencer Barnes, we missed out on some key players. So let's try to find a couple. Parker Taylor was a 75 overall guard I had interest in. Backup caliber to start. A little bit of upside there. The safety I wanted was Kendrick Bridges, and here come the Patriots to take him. But he's more of a run support safety over a cover safety. 
so that is okay, but I feel I still could have developed him. And TJ Olsen, by the way, ended up being the highest overall player to come out of this class, period. He went to the middle of the first round, I believe, and 85 speed, 78 zone, 84 tackle. He would have been a great one to get and a safety for the future. Hopefully next year's class gives us the chance to actually address that. But I think it was a good offseason. I love the additions we made this year. Tell me what you think down below in the comment section. And we'll get on to the next year of Cardinal football here soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.